Would you stand with us this morning?
that we can come into your presence and worship you together. Oh, Father, help us to never take that for granted. It is such an honor and a privilege. And we raise our hearts to you. Lord God, we raise our voices to you. And I just pray that your presence would be heavy in this place. Fill us, Lord God, with your presence. Let your Holy Spirit blow through. Jesus, thank you for your presence. I ask that you empower this church to go out into the community and be you to people, Lord, that they would see your love above all else. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
check. There we go. Yay. Awesome. Um, so anyway, for me, ministry, uh, hold on, let's go back. Um, when we got married, we got married right after I graduated from college. Um, and so we've been married for 17 years. Somebody asked me 18. yesterday. 18. Like, Going on 18. That's what it is. 20. Yes, almost 20. She's the one that's like, eh, I don't know. I'm, I'm the one that... Very much the opposite. I'm the one who forgets. And, but I forget how old I am most of the time, too. So. Um, we have a wonderful family. We have four boys. Um, they are a handful. Um, I'll tell you that. There are four of them, 16, 14, 11, and 9. And so um, they are very excited um, because um, our ministry has been mostly in the West. Um, we did ministry in Colorado for a while, but then we have spent 10 years in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we spent time in Lebanon, Oregon, as I did as a youth pastor, um, a little in Washington, but we spent also time in Moscow, Idaho for uh, like three years. Um, and so then after Moscow, we went back to his land. Um, <laughs> the land and, of the corn. And we have been there for two years. Um, and so we are excited to be here and with you today. Uh, ministry for me has been um, challenging. Um, I enjoy being in ministry. Um, I am a pastor's kid. Please don't hold that against me, please. Um, my father uh, felt a call to ministry when I was young. And so I have known nothing different than ministry. Um, and so he did ministry. He went to Nazarene Bible College in Colorado, um, and I grew up being a pastor's kid. Um, I came to Christ when I was very young. Uh, I was five years old, and I felt like God had put in me this sense of, I want a relationship, because when the pastor had talked about it, he talked about the relationship that you have with God is kind of like your father. And I have a wonderful relationship with my earthly father. And so at a, a young age, I said, if it's anything like this, I want to have that. And if it's any better, then woohoo, I'm on board. Um, and so as a kid, I came to Christ. Um, and then as a young teenager, I felt a call to ministry. And when God called me to ministry, I, I cannot sing. This one can. I cannot. Um, but we, I did a talent contest um, in, in a youth retreat um, in Colorado. And after we had a wonderful message, and I felt like God was calling me to the altar, and he said to me, do my work. And I was like, okay, I can go, and I can sing, and I can do that. That's awesome. That is not me. That is not, I promise. But the words were not, go sing. The words were, do my work. Um, and for me, that has been a wonderful thing as far as ministry goes, because after getting over my understanding that I could not hold a tune in a bucket, that I love kids. I love teenagers. I love little kids. Um, now, I love adults, too, to grant you. I'm not, I'm not out on that one. Um, <laughs> But kids and I, I don't know what it is, but there's just something. And I, I love my boys. Um, and so I was like, youth ministry is where I'm going to go. It's going to be great. And out of college, we tried. I, I put out applications and places and nothing. And I got a friend who was like, well, hey, have you ever thought about maybe coming and be a children's pastor? Well, not really. Because I thought, I'm going to do youth ministry. Um, and God said, eh, maybe we should try this. And so we were, I was a children's pastor for a while. And then after some time, it did turn into youth ministry. Um, so I had some children's ministry experience. And youth ministry then has become uh, the focus of most all of the ministry that I've had. When I was in Moscow, um, I did, we did ministry... I did ministry in a different way, even from youth ministry. I did some, well, what was called a connections and communications type of pastor. I did a lot of administrative work, but I also did a lot of going in and being a part of the community, reaching out and trying to connect our church to the community around, because uh, that was something that was definitely needed for that church. Um, and so 
I did that. I feel like God did well with that, but then there was some other transition that happened in the church, and the youth ministries was there and open, and so I still did the connections part, but I did youth ministry as well, um, and me and Valerie were both on staff um, in Moscow. Um, she was worship pastor, and we felt like wow, this is awesome to do ministry together and to do ministry on staff together. And during those, that time, I believe that's really where we kind of came to grips with um, doing ministry as a team um, and being together um, and working that way. Inside of ministry, it has its ups and downs. Um, I had a time when I just, I, I didn't do great inside of connecting well with a position that I had. And it was hard for me. I was let go, and I went, we went back, um, and it really, it really messed me up, <laughs> I want to say. Uh, it wrecked me, um, because in ministry, I always thought it was going to be this way, and God, these blocks were going to go and go and go, and then I hit, and it was, it was just not the that position just was not the place. Um, and so it hurt, and I took it very personally, and very, it was very sensitive. Um, I lost confidence in who I was, um, and I could, did not understand how or why this would be happening. Um, it took a while. I became a teacher's assistant for a year, um, still working with kids. I was in a small like high school. And I worked through and knew that there was still a connection that I loved to have. And inside of that time, I started to get sick. And I didn't understand why I was sick. Um, and I thought, I, I don't know what's going on. I, and the hard thing is, is, it is, I promise it wasn't COVID way back. And this is years ago. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if, if, if you listen, is, there's a lot of, was a lot of coughing and it was hard to breathe, and there was issues that way. Um, and doctors were baffled. They thought that I had asthma, or that it was allergies, or it was a mix of the two, and they did multiple procedures on me, and they tried to figure out, and they just couldn't understand. Um, when we got to Moscow, we were doing ministry again, um, because I felt like God was putting us back in that place. Um, and I had an allergy doctor that just said, have you ever thought that maybe it was vocal cord dysfunction? And vocal cord dysfunction is this, um, it's, I don't know how to explain it, it's about breathing, okay? So it makes you feel like you have bronchitis or even pneumonia, but it's up here in your vocal cords. And it's all about stress and anxiety and everything that was going on and hurting me at the time. She said, I think this is a case that might be vocal cord dysfunction. She sent me to... I have to add no. that most doctors have never even heard of vocal cord dysfunction. We right. tell them that he was diagnosed with vocal cord dysfunction, and they say, what? They have no idea. <laughs> so I went to an ear, nose, and throat guy, and he did a quick overview, and he said, no, that's not it. And I, another six months went by um, and finally went to a specialist and they put a camera down, and when I breathe, then my vocal cords, instead of doing the normal thing, they do this little flap, and they go crazy, and it then causes stress and anxiety on your throat. Um, that was actually a major blessing and an answer to prayer, because with vocal cord dysfunction, the main treatment, it's not medication, it's not any type of surgery, it's speech therapy, and that's it. And I say that, and it's odd, because I went and I was like, right, this isn't going to work. You know, I've been through everything. I've tried everything. And I just, mm -mm, this isn't going to work. But I sat down in the office, and she said, today, you're just going to breathe for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I was breathing. And she said, do you realize that this is what you look like when you are breathing? I'm like, no, of course I don't know that, because <laughs> I can't see myself when I breathe. <laughs> um, and it, inside of that, she's like, you need to stop, and you need to breathe from your belly. I'm like, okay. 
So you breathe out real deep and you breathe through your belly and then you do this really weird thing with your lips where you're like, <laughs> and it looks really weird. But what it does is, is it brings the oxygen in and then when it comes out, then the vocal cords are relaxed and it helps your body to refocus and to get back to what is normal and to focus and do the, the thing that your vocal cords have been made to do. After six weeks, I had no issues. We were floored. Um, to this day, I still have times when I'm a little bit nervous where my throat gets a little scratchy or I'm, you know, I'll have to take a break or I'll have to breathe right. But I have to figure out how to speak. And I've had to figure out how to breathe. And that has been a big key moment to open up what God would have us do. So in Ezekiel chapter 37, this is where we're going. We're going to the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel chapter 37, and um, I'm going to read for you uh, from verses um, from 1 to, hold on, this is new, sorry, um, to verse 10. Um, and it says, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the, Holy, by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. Oh, hello. <laughs> Somebody's Facebook living. That's awesome. Um, I will, sorry. Um, I will put <laughs> breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked and the tendons and flesh appeared on them as skin covered them and there was no breath in them. It was, for me, it's kind of like, you know, a puppet that has the strings and it's going around. That's kind of what I imagined what this looked like was just kind of these limp kind of like, oh, you know, a puppet. Um, there wasn't breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet as a vast army. Now the word breath in Hebrew is ruach. Okay, ruach. It sounds really gross. Um, <laughs> it is the spirit of God that is, put, that is put into us. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, we see that the rock that was used in the creation of man is the key element of God creating in his image. The rock that is used in Ezekiel is the same as of that on which God created with. It's the breath. The Lord speaks and says, speak the breath back into them. When they were filled with the rock, the Spirit of God, they truly came to life and they were filled. As I found out, it's not about building things up and trying to be super busy and to be and to work hard and get all stressed out. It's about connecting to the living relational, transformational reality of Jesus Christ in our midst. That Holy Spirit that is around and among us, that is that breath that's inside of us. As I continued to learn and do my exercise, breathing exercising, and focus on 